Hey everybody, welcome to Studio 45 Online. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are gonna have an awesome time today. Uh, if you didn't know, we have a new theme this month because it is October now, and I've been looking forward to this theme for a very long time, and it's perfect for people who have a sweet tooth. Our theme is Custom Creations. There's only one you, and that goes perfect with our big idea. Our big idea this month is really amazing, and it's one that if you put it to work inside of you, it, God will change the world around you with it. Our big idea is individuality, and that's just simply put, discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference. And you know, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I like to go to the ice cream places where you can they just give you a bowl, and they're like, all right, put whatever you want on it. And so that's what I like to do. I scoop it all on there, and I get to the checkout line, they see how much like candy, like gummy worms and Reese's and all this stuff, and they're like, that is definitely one of a kind. Uh, but uh, we are all created you unique and individual, and we were created for a purpose. And so we're going to be discovering what that looks like this month. But to start off, we've got a super fun game that involves ice cream, and you guys are going to get to cheer along at home. But we're going to play this with some of our staff. All right, so we've got some of our team up here. We've got Miss Alicia, Mr. Chris, and Miss Erica. And you guys are gonna be building an amazing, incredible dessert, a tower of ice cream. So each of you guys will get your own gallon of ice cream. Here you go, you don't wanna eat it all in one sitting. No, I'm just kidding. All right, don't eat it all actually yet. So you have guys got your ice cream, and in front of you, you have your ice cream cone with your scooper. Now, what you're gonna do is you are gonna race to build the highest and tallest, best tower that you possibly can build okay and then at the end we've got one little surprise twist that you are not gonna want to miss all right so get ready to build your towers on your mark get set go Go ahead and put your scoops down. All right. Wow, look at these epic, amazing towers. I would eat all of these right now. Okay, here's where our game gets to be a little bit more of a twist, okay? Because if there's one thing you know about ice cream, it melts quickly, especially when you add a little bit of heat. So what we're gonna have you guys do, we're gonna have you each rotate. So uh, Chris, if you'll go down there, Eric, if you'll come down here, and then Alicia, if you'll come over here, you are gonna try to melt the other person's tower, okay? So you can strategically plan how you do that. Now, it looks like Alicia's is just kinda hanging on it by a thread there. We'll see how this goes. Now, while you're at home, we want you guys to cheer for who you want to win in the meltdown phase. So everybody gets, it. Oh, hold on now, don't start turning yours on yet. We gotta do this fair, everybody at the same time. So you can decide where you're gonna strategically melt your cone, and we'll see who wins. Here we go, three, two, one. Hopefully we don't flip a breaker. Oh yeah, oh man, this is, wow, it's like really wavy. It's like the car wash when you see the water drops going up. Chris is shooting ice cream all the way across the room. Oh man. We should mention that you should put the hair dryer on hot mode. <laughs> oh man. It looks like this is getting messy. Nice and sticky. Man, Alicia, your cone is hanging in there. Look over here at this one. Oh man. There is a lot of ice cream everywhere. It's a good thing we test these things first. We are gonna need, oh, and all right, Alicia's is down. All right, now to see between Chris, there we go, between Chris and Erica. Oh, all right, three, two, one. All right, well, that was awesome with a totally unbiased judge, me. I am picking my wife, Erica. She won the game. It's amazing. Look how much ice cream is left there compared to everybody else. Well, we've got a great story with the so-and-so show, so let's check it out. The Bible is more than a single book. It's a collection of 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry written by dozens of different authors over thousands of years that all come together to tell one big story. It's a bigger story than you can even imagine. It's a big story about a really big God 
and what he did to rescue us. It shows us who we are and what we were created to do. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Oh, I know that sound. Mm -hmm. ah. some? Do I? Yeah, I mean, do you? Yeah, I'd like some. Mm. Oh, there's nothing like some good WWs. Wait, what did you say? Some what? WWs. The candy we're eating? WWs are my favorite candy. My whole life I've been a fan of WWs. I used to go door-to-door to door in my neighborhood as a kid saying, trick or treat, give me some WWs. <laughs> and people would just look at me like I was crazy. Mm -hmm. It's because they're called M&Ms, not WWs. M&Ms? Yeah. You've been reading them upside down. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't sound like something I'd do. Hey, wow, this is easier. Oh, hey, everybody. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And you're watching The So-and-So Show. What are you doing with the mannequin? I am putting a beard on him. <laughs> yes, that is obvious. I can see that. Yeah, well, who is, who is simultaneously the coolest and weirdest person you know? Uh, Longbeard Carl. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What does that have to do with the mannequin? Oh, well, I've been thinking that me and you are, are pretty good hosts of this show, right? Thanks. But we're not perfect. Okay. We can't possibly be the best host ever because we have too many flaws. Speak for yourself. But what if I took the parts we like from different people and made one ultra super host? Uh, wait, wait. So, wait, the mannequin's going to take my place? Come on, it'll be great. Okay, let's see. We have Longbeard Carl's beard, right? We've got uh, Taco Cat T. Uh, taco Cat spelled backwards is Taco Cat. Uh, right. Next, I need. Uh... Uh, taco Cow spelled backwards is Woco uh, Cat. I think that our co host would have an excellent singing voice. Well, I wonder, wonder who. I know. Oh. I know. Our good friend Fred. Eating my tray of lasagna, but I want to give you a big thank you for that big tray of lasagna. Lasagna! That was beautiful. This should remind us. <laughs> How could we ever forget? Okay, our host should be wise, well, like I, Kellen. I wish I were wise like Kellen. Wait, why are you putting, oh, oh, oh I get it, because wisdom is like brain smarts that comes from your heart. Oh, it's very wise of you, John. Really? Yeah, we all have our moments. Oh, yes, we do. Let's see, what else would make a perfect host? Lasagna! No, 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 no. Good listening skills. You know, like our friend Leonard. Did someone say ham? I'm a good listener. Hey, say anything to me, I'll repeat it, repeat it back to you word for word. Focus is important. A super host would never get distracted. Focus is important. A super host would never get distracted. Ha uh -huh. ha! Uh, there we go. Now, it just needs one, one more thing. Uh, I know. You think you can out focus me? Huh? Huh? Look at me when I'm talking to you. Look at me. Uh, you're out focusing me. <laughs> okay. A super host should be funny and uplifting. Oh, wow! Great work, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Time to test it out. Oh, what do you need me to do? I'll oh, do anything you need me to you're do. You're good, kiddo. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'll be right back. Okay, okay. You need, you need some help? No, no, I got it. Well, he, he looks you're like- You're good. Uh, I, I can help you. I really could. Uh, oh. Mannequin montage.
finally decided to come back to the show. Huh? Yeah, I think our super host is ready for phase two of his training. What's that? Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen. What's with the giant doll? Oh, it's our brand new super host. Okay. What kind of Bible story do you have for us today? I have a biblical one. <laughs> Get it? Because <laughs> it's the Bible. <laughs> Never mind. Let's hop to it. Today, we're looking at the very beginning of the Bible, when God created humans. It's in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. But before we get there, let me set the stage for you. Right before creating people, God created the world. He created light out of darkness. He created the sky. He created the entire universe. God saw that everything he created was good. Then God said, let us make human beings so that they are like us. Whoa, did you catch that? The first thing God ever says about people is that he wants to make us to be like him. Now that's cool. Next, God said, let them rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the livestock and all the wild animals and let them rule over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own likeness. He created them to be like himself. He created them as male and female. God made us in his own likeness. Or sometimes we say God made us in his image. That means we can learn a lot about ourselves by getting to know God better. And we can also learn more about God from the people we see around us. It's not just when you look up at the stars or see a beautiful sunset that you can feel closer to God. You can see God all around you in everyday moments. You can see how God loves to be in relationship with us, how he loves us, how he teaches us, and how he takes care of us. We can see God's heart when people are kind and loving to one another. You can learn a little bit of how joyful and fun God is when we spend time with our friends. And here's the deal. God is creative. He's strong and brave. He's extremely smart, but he's also gentle and caring. And that's just to name a few of many amazing things that come from our Heavenly Father. All of us even with our differences of appearance, of skills, of personalities and passions, we are all made in the image of God. Wow, that's spectacular. That, that makes me feel really special and important. It should. Every person on this planet is incredibly valuable because we were made in the image of God. Amazing. Thanks, Kellen. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Kellen. Wow. It's, it's crazy to think that I, John, of the Basement Studio, am a carrier of God's image. Yeah. Uniquely and wonderfully made, a child of God. Yeah. Seriously, this is amazing. Aren't you excited? Yeah, I am. I just, I'm just realizing how much our ultra super host maybe wasn't such a good idea. Oh? No, I, I'd rather have a co-host who is made in God's image, one who can talk and play games and blink. Someone like a... <laughs> Someone like you, pal. I can't do that without moving my lip. <laughs> <laughs> You're a great host. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Yeah. So, uh, what most about my hosting skills reminds you I was made in God's image is my good looks, my, my sense of humor, mm. is my minty fresh breath. <sighs> yeah. Reveal the question. How would you describe God? <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah. Kellen gave us lots of great examples, like the way God loves us, or how he's brave and smart and gentle. But, well, like he said, that was only a few descriptions. Mm -hmm. What pops out in your mind when you think of God? 
And we will see you guys next time. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And I'm Warren. And the, uh, this was the this was the so and so show. Did you hear that? Yeah. Just leave the room quietly. I can't go sideways. You're gonna have to pick me up. Where are you going? <laughs> hey, Brandon, check it out. Look at my blinking. Pretty good, huh? I can't find my glasses, though. Do you know where they are? Brandon, come on. You know I can't see anything without my glasses. Buddy, come on. What, what's wrong with you? Come on, we just talked about being created in the image of God, and you're being rude. God's not rude, come on. And I'm Warren. And what an awesome story from Kellen and John and Brandon. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I always enjoy when I get to check out the so-and-so show. But you know, the big idea this month is individuality. And I gotta tell you, when we're talking about discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference, there's no place I love to start more than the book of Genesis. Man, when you read about how God created the entire world and then how the best part of his creation, the part that he said was very good, was when he created man and women in his image. It's phenomenal to read about. That is how God started the world. Isn't it cool that you can actually read the history of the very beginning of the world in God's word? That is phenomenal. Now, when we're talking about this, I think the question that John and Brandon ended on is a really great question for you to ask whoever you're watching this video with. How would you describe God. There's a lot of big words that you would use to describe God, isn't there? A lot of awesome words that you would use to describe God. Maybe you would say he's amazing. Maybe you'd say he's wonderful. But remember what we talked about? God made man and women in his image. Let me put it this way. The psalmist in our memory verse for this month would say this about to God about himself. And I think this is why it's so important to talk about how you would describe God with the people around you. Because the psalmist said this, how you, talking to God, made me is amazing and wonderful. I praise you for that. Now, if someone came up to you and said, I'm amazing and wonderful, you might think that person's prideful, but they're really not. They're saying they're amazing and wonderful because that is true for God. And we can praise God because he made you the way that you are. So if you have freckles on your nose, guess what? God made you that way. If you've got red hair or you've got brown hair or blonde hair, if you've got light skin or dark skin, God made you that way. And it is amazing and wonderful, and he is worth praising because he made you the way you are. In fact, the psalmist would go on to say, what you have done, talking about creating him, what you have done is wonderful. I know that very well. I think this is an awesome verse to memorize. If you want to look it up in your own Bible, you can go to the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verse 14. And you can read it for yourself so you can memorize it because the more you describe God to the people around you, the better understanding you'll have of yourself and of the people around you. Again, that's why individuality is such a powerful big idea because when we discover who we're meant to be, who our creator designed us to be, what special things he's put inside you that are reflections, not a complete reflection, but reflections of an amazing creator, it helps you learn who you're meant to be so that you can use who you're meant to be to make a difference. And that is a big idea. We can't wait to see how we can put it to work inside of us and how God can put it to work inside of us so we can change the world around us. Thanks for tuning in this weekend, and we can't wait to see you next weekend.